Amaterasu and the others returned to the foot of Ezofuji. There they saw Lika praying intently. The storm had subsided. Then, as if to celebrate their hard-won victory, the twin volcanoes of Ezofuji erupted into great pillars of flame. The villagers felt the warmth on their skin and wept tears of joy. However, Oki merely surveyed the scene stoically, remaining silent. Although the evil demons had been driven away, the thought of having taken the sword caused so much grief weighed heavily on his heart. The only one who could ease the burden of his woes was Samako. The chieftain who had rescued Kemu from the shrine stepped forward. Silently, he approached Oki, offering an outstretched hat. His eyes betrayed the complexity of the emotions behind the gesture. Oki, realizing the gravity of the scene, extended his hand in return. The moment they shook hands, Wepkir was reborn into a village far too strong to ever fall victim to evil again. As for Kutune, the sword that vanquished the twin demons, it was returned to its pedestal by Oki's own hands. And as long as the glow remained, no evil dare draw close. Kutune's gleam spoke of a power too great to succumb to evil. At that moment, a brilliant flash of light shot forth from Kutune, striking squarely on the frozen surface of Laochi Lake. Though the lake had never shown any sign of melting, cracks began to open up along its surface. The legend of the Iron Ark, Yamato, said to have fallen from the heavens, and the holy Laochi Lake, which it called home, was revealed to be more than a mere legend before all those present. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Okami. In the last episode, we defeated Demon Lech Ku alongside Oki. And in this episode, going up here, the Ark of Yamato, it's floating in the sky. How could such an enormous thing float in the sky like that? It must mean what the old legend says is true. That's one thing. In video games, there's a legend. It's always true. The legend of this Ark of Sung and came from the celestial plane and into our world. It says the Celestials, who fell to our world with it, were eaten up by countless vicious monsters. By the army controlled by the evil ruler of darkness, Yami. So the Ark of Yamato is related to the powers of darkness. Now you guys might be saying, why the heck does this thing that is so evil have a rainbow going up to it as the bridge? The thing is, believe it or not, in Japanese mythology, rainbows were often associated with misfortune. Yeah, I know, kind of weird. Now, we could go up there to the Ark of Yamato now, but just warning. Going in there is a point of no return, and there's things we have not taken care of yet, though. So this is more or less just going to be one final video of us taking care of the side quest that we never did, and then going inside. Now, something that I should mention. There's three stray beads that I've said before are quote-unquote deadly, and they are. The thing is, for now, I'm going to be skipping those. Not because I'm going to off-screen them, not because I'm just going to speed up and play music, but because I want to do those fights, because they are really, really annoying fights as a live stream. And I'm just not going to have the time to do a live stream of it for a few more weeks, so those are getting the shaft for now, but trust me, they will be done later. First place we can go is in here. And check it out! What do we got here? Otter Mask. 
Woohoo! It's so much worse than if you erupted. I can play in the snow straight away, and I made a gigantic snowball. All the grown-ups complain about the snow. We kids loving it. It doesn't matter how cold it is. Why don't you try making a snowball here too? Uh, let's see. I'm only a kid, so this is the biggest I can manage. You're bigger than me, so you should be able to do better. I'm a freaking animal. Well, you know what that means. The last time we're gonna see ball pushing physics. Amen. Okay. Uh, what you gotta do is run over the bundles of snow, and it makes your snowball bigger. Uh, we're gonna be here for quite a while, so I think you guys can guess what I'm gonna do, though. But first, I wanna open this up, and inside, white porcelain pot. Not quite what I was hoping for. What I was actually looking for was buried at the very edge of the snowball area. There is a stray bead. I thought it was above ground, though, but apparently it's not. And this is the snowball that I've rolled up so far after getting over all those bumps. Now, oddly, rolling over fire and even using fire on it doesn't seem to affect any way, just going into the water does. No idea why, but okay. Uh, is this big enough? Oh, come on! It's not close enough for you! I mean, what, you can't turn around? He's too good to turn around just because he has an otter for a face? Come on, dude. Let's roll it up to him. Maybe. Woo! You did it, Wolfie! I've never seen a snowball so huge! I can't believe you got it so big! That's what she- Nah, never mind. Okay, 50 praise for doing that, and there's a stray bead in here, though, so definitely worth it. Okay, last time we ever have to deal with ball-pushing physics. REJOICE! Next up, found these cranes in town, in- uh, web cure that I never fed. And with that, we have 356 preys, meaning... We now have a full 20 heart containers! Ish. <laughs> well, solar energy, though, but yep, another way that this game is similar to Zelda is that you have 20 units of health mag when maxed out. You have to get all the sun fragments if you want that much, though, because it won't let you upgrade it past a certain point using preys. But anyway, going into the teleport. Now, back in Shinshu Field, something you might notice, even though it is daytime, and you can hear the music playing, it's dark. Let's draw the sun, see what happens. Nope, still dark. That is because, unfortunately, my grand master plan of solving the solar eclipse by just drawing the sun somewhere else in the sky where it's not being blocked out by the moon, not gonna work. So, no matter where you go now, it is always going to be dark during the day. So, yep. Kind of a shame, though, because I like how this world looks in the daytime, though, and it's kind of sad that you can't have that, though, anymore, though, but... Uh, here at Thomas Place, Tom of the Flaming Pyrotechnist, there's something that I've wanted to show for a while, and I think now is the perfect time to do it. Let's draw a cherry bomb here, but why don't we draw water to it? That was not time! That water, okay. As you see, I put out the fuse, so... I am here to sell you guys on something. Your life not full of enough misery? You want to live a more painful life? Well now you can use Water Spout on Cherry Bomb anywhere in the world and experience the true pain of ball pushing physics right in your own home. Haha, <laughs> I always wanted to do that. But what we're really here to do, ooh, wind, wind, must draw wind, must draw wind, see what's under there, under there, please, please, please. okay, what's this, what's this, what's this, what do we got? Bullhorn. Your mother's calling for you! And Nintendo believed it. What we want to do here is Tama. Oh, uh, another year's festival's coming on. I'm all burned out. I wonder if I'll ever be fired up. Is that again? You know, fired up, so you're hard panning. Bam, bam, bam. This guy's all washed up. You tackle him, it's no good. I'm not gonna give you. That's not gonna get fired up again. What you want to do is. You need to have Cherry Bomb 2 from Ryoshima Coast and Cherry Bomb 3 from. Kamui. Amazing! And you get praise for blowing him up. You'll even come back and he's all like, I need more Bam Bam. So, what you do is... Okay, I guess I made him happy even though he can't be happy. We draw a cherry bomb, and we draw another cherry bomb. Or we fail miserably at drawing a circle with a line coming out of it. And there we go! Did that work? Where do we start from? Calls for something even more drastic. So now, very carefully so they're not too close together. So much for that! 
very carefully so they're not too close together. We draw. Can I draw the freaking cherry bomb, please? All right, let's draw one over here. Okay, that's not too close to anything. We'll draw one right here and draw one in the middle for a triple cherry bomb. Whoa, was that a triple whammy? I hope you had ho I hope you had homeowners insurance. <laughs> Unbelievable, and you get 50 praise. Coming back to me, I'm Tama. You needed a triple explosion. Your house getting blown up to remember your name. Okay, fine. Gets me a stray bead. I'm not complaining. Let's just go. I just realized the thing looks like a giant nose coming out of the mountain. Our next destination for stray beads is here in Shinshu Field as well. Talking to the nameless man. He says that he needs his kiln back so he can get back to making statues because he's kind of a pottery man. So we have to destroy this demon gate, which we probably should have destroyed early in the LP. I don't know why I waited so long to do this though. But to be fair, you can't finish this side quest until much later anyway. Like, by how much later I'm talking, you cannot do the side quest all the way until you have rescued Lika and brought her to Waku Shrine. That is how late in the game that you are able to actually complete this, despite it being in Shinshu Field. No idea why the designers did that, but they did. Just take our lousy 2,460 yen, doing good on time and damage, and... Woohoo, 15 prey. Something that I actually should have mentioned a lot earlier in the LP that I didn't is the symbol on the praise orbs, it means happiness in Japanese. Happiness, gratitude, it can mean various things like that. Only 10 prey, that's the last time I saved you from starvation. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just we're used to the bigger numbers now, so I'm kind of overreacting. Anyway, talk to the nameless man. Well. Faint whiff of blossoms far away, let's see here. What we want to do is draw the moon in the sky, then the sun. That is an awfully close moon. And the morning of the next day, he will be at his kiln chopping wood. This is the life, huh? Let's see here, works my pride my workshop is a friend joint. He just pushed us with his axe. Alright. So he wants to make some pots, he finished his first piece, and we get the Azure Neck. What we want to do with these vases, is want to grab them in our mouth, and she just lets a, right, what he thinks is a regular wolf do this, and we want to go find some statues. You Running around Shinshu Field, if you've played this game before, you might have found statues that Isun's like, you know, maybe you should leave an offering at the statue. That's what this is for. It's not money, it's not items, you want to take these vases to them. I'm just going to go ahead and cut ahead to the location of all five of these, and you have to make it a new day every time you do this. delivering all five of his vases to places where they were really enjoyed by the spirits or travelers, I guess, or something like that. I don't really understand it myself, but you get a stray beat in the process, so I'm not going to ask questions. And with that, our next destination for getting a stray bead is Gale Shrine. Since there was one, pl there was one stray bead, we could not get there on our original run to that dungeon, so we're going back to it. Yeah. 
now that I think more about it, I think you're gonna want to actually go to Seon City first, because here, they sell the Tundra Beads, which is the ultimate rosary. Oh, you definitely want these. These are gonna make getting that next stray bead a lot easier, which is why I'm going to equip them. Don't worry, I'll equip Solar Flare again later. But, I want to have these equipped right now. Okay, after those detours, we are now inside Gale Shrine at long last. What you want to do is, go over here where the Demon Gate was that got you the key on your first visit. And at the end... Guess who it is? No, not Orochi. It is... Fusei. This five cannon warriors falling in line look awfully bored. You sure they're even awake? Since you return to Gale Shrine, I've been waiting for you. You can do this anytime after you've beaten Oni Island, but I recommend it as one of the very last things you do because this is not easy. This is the Kusa 5, the new Satomi canine warriors. Rain or shine, they shall battle monsters and all their evil. Here in Taga Pass, none can match their power. Please test the power of the Kusa 5 for yourselves. Huh? Pretty please, it would be an honor to have the Bane of the Crimson Helm and Orochi battle against the Kusa 5. <laughs> well, if you put it that way. First, there's something I should mention. The Kusa 5 is a tough, ba battle-hardened group. They won't hold back once the match begins. Once their honor is on the line in fierce battle, I would not be surprised if one of you fell in battle. The Kusa 5 is at least ten times more powerful than Orochi. This will be a life or death struggle. You must prepare to face a battle unlike any you've seen before. That's a dumb question. You think we back down right now? Right, Ami? What, are we going to do this death match or what? Bring it! <laughs> Instead, I'm scared. Alright, this is basically the super boss fight of this game. Now, this is going to be three phases. The first one you're going to be fighting the... Why did it show the Earth Mirror? What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, There is a very cheap way to do this first phase. And this first phase isn't too difficult to begin with, though. But I'm just going to do it to be just show it to you. What you do is, you probably have a lot of exorcism slip S's that you haven't ever used. And you probably also have power slash 3 at this point in the game. So basically what you do is, you just get in the middle of them, use an exorcism slip S, use power slash 3, repeat. It makes this fight, this first phase at least, ridiculously easy. And you can just keep doing this. You cannot do this in phases 2 and 3. But you can exploit it in phase one, and phases two and three are certainly challenging enough to warrant you being cheap in the first phase, so. No shame in doing this, at least I don't think so. You guys might think there's shame in doing it, though. But I don't, because I have no shame. Um, actually, instead of Power Slash 3, let's try out our new Tundra Beats this time. Woo! That, I don't, oh, okay, there we go. Never mind, it's because it's switching back and forth between two health bars. Whoa, we got to do a 90 hit combo that quickly? Dang. Forgot they were that good. Uh, let's do another one. These exorcism slip S's aren't going to serve as any other purpose ever, so I really don't see too much badness in doing this. Badness. Yeah, great English. So I'm just going to waste all my exorcism slip S's on this fight just so I can cheap out in this first phase, because phases sec 2 and 3, you're going to need all the energy conserved that you can have. Especially 3. Let's do it again. I discovered this trick actually during my practice file, though, so I only recently discovered this trick. And just a couple more. And one of them's down! And of course they turn into flowers when they die, just like everything else does in this game. Uh, can I power slash you? And let's finish you off. And can I power slash. You? Dangerously close power slash. Okay. Oh, nope. Do Thunder Edge. Nope. Hey! Not taking away my godhood. Only in the first phase. Come on. No, eh, no. No taking away my god. I'm talking to them like they really are my dogs. One more. I'm just trying to waste all these exorcism blue S's I don't even I'm never even gonna use though, just because they give them to you in treasure chests when you don't even need them really stupid in all honesty. At least I thought so. Alright, do your charge attack. Hey! Nope. Alright, let's just get our godhead back up, please. Alright, phase one is done. Again, I know what I did was kind of cheap, though, but hey. 
All right. I thought for sure it was gonna tell me I did badly on both, but anyway, fight two begins. This time you're only fighting three of them. I guess one of them chickened out. Actually, I think these are the three that um went away. I don't know what they're doing here since they went away and then. I think they are at least. Yeah, these are. That's Ume and that's yeah, Hayabusa. Yeah, these are the three that went away. And oh god, they're using boom attacks. Oh, no, 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 no! Get away from me! Get away from me! Okay, good. And actually, I take that back. You can do this cheap trick. This is honestly what I recommend doing, though, just because this fight is really annoying and it goes on for way too long. And unless you're doing New Game Plus, it's pretty much impossible to get a good rank for time or damage. So, to be honest, this is one of the few times where I will condone being cheap. Okay, fight two done. Now, fight three is a one-on-one, -on -one, and you might be going, all right, that's going to be easy. No, it is not. Because look who you're fighting. Yep, we're fighting Tay, Mr. One-Eye. <laughs> so, yes, he is no pushover. He does not. Actually, let me test this. Because I actually don't think he falls to the exorcism slips. I think this is mainly what I was thinking of. No, he does not. Look at that. An exorcism slip L does that much damage. Yeah, that is how powerful this guy is. Uh, rosaries work great. Tundra beads with the gold dust is mo my recommend. My recommend. My my recommendation for a weapon for this fight. Mainly, just want to jump out of the way of his charges, and then when he's done, hit him in the back with the rosary. And that's mainly how you're going to want to be doing this fight. Also, keep a distance from him so that his dig attack doesn't hurt you. But if you have the Thunder Beads equipped, you can be out of his range of attack and hit him still. Do not be afraid to use items, because this fight is tough. But that's really all the advice I can give. This is pretty much a rinse and repeat fight for like 10 minutes, though. So, might as well use these extra Holy Bone S's that I'm never going to use otherwise. Only one way to finish off a dog. Pee on him. I am peeing on your grave. Now, I think I did... I think I did okay, admittedly, even though the game begs to differ, up until the end when I started just getting downright comboed. What magnificent techniques you have, you are worthy of my praise. Literally, we are worthy of her praise. Let's see. Let's see. Where were they during the Crimson Helm battle? Well, you see, in any event, it is now clear the White Wolf and Little Bug have now just... Jeez. You get exactly 48 praise for doing so. And you get a stray bead. Like I said, even though the game begs to differ with me, I think up until the end when I started getting comboed like crazy and had to use some of my Holy Bone M's, I think I did okay. But, of course, the game's gonna tell me I did badly on time and damage. And here what our stray bead count looks like. Stray bead number 44 is one of those things we're going to be doing in the live stream. So like I said, it's being skipped in the count for now. Stray bead 65 is another that we're skipping for now. 79 
Yet another one we're skipping. Those are the three that we're skipping. And now that I look at my notes for which stray beads we didn't get... 87, 90, and 93... Eighty-seven and ninety-three are both really easy. Ninety? Oh boy, you guys are gonna like seeing me do that one. All right, so now that we're done with that, we are back off to Kamui. What you want to do is using Mist Warp, which you should have obtained from the Emperor uh, by buying the Mist Pot. You want to go to Ezofuji Rocky Area, and just like North Ryoshima Coast Rocky Area, you can bet this place is going to be awesome. We have a huge bear here that we can feed. That's five preys. God, I still can't believe we made it through basically what the super boss of this game was. You know, like the Q-Lex of this game. You know, the set the Kusa 5, excuse me. We got Porcelain Pot there. We got a Stray Bead there. And we got... Come on, get it. Silver Pocket Watch! Gonna sell for a lot. Alright, and now that we've done that, going back over to the save point, I'm now going to be going to Yoshpet. See you guys in just a moment. Back inside Yoshpet, Kai is here for us. Matarasu, what in the world are you doing here? Well, honestly, I knew you'd come back here. That's not creepy. We ran through the forest together. I was really surprised to find that you keep up with me. No one's even come close to beating me in a race before. Since the day I've had this burning question in my head, which of us is the fastest? So, what she wants to do is, she wants to race through Yoshpet. Yeah, she's treating a place that could kill you if you're in it for more than a few minutes as a freaking racetrack. This race is not easy. You're gonna have to use shortcuts, you're gonna have to, like, not get hit hardly at all. And this is why I told you the first time through, if you're trying to get all the stray beads, you really, really, really want to just bl just defeat all the evil trees and bloom them, though, because if you do that, there's a bunch of shortcuts you can take. And you want to take advantage of every one of them. Because this is pure evil. Anytime you can avoid going on ice, do so, because ice slows you down by quite a bit. That's really all I can suggest. We've seen this run through Yoshpet before, so I think I'm just going to speed this up and cut to my successful attempts. See you guys in just a moment. God, did I really do that in one try? Oh my god, you guys saw that! I didn't cut away at all! It was all one continuous take with my commentary! I did it in one try! Oh my god! And I just woke up my cat. I'm starting to lose sleep over that thing for final blue my days. Yeah, you were losing sleep though, but now you can sleep comfortably at night knowing that you're slower than we are. And she gives us a stray bead. Alright. So, looking at our stray bead count now. We have one more to get. And it is right here. One more besides those three, obviously. And it is right here in Poncton. Yes, we do. 
We can only do this after saving Lika from the spirit gate. My cat has given me the dirtiest look ever saying, Can you shut the hell up already so I can get some sleep? Ah, oh, don't worry. There's only a few minutes left of the video when I get sleeping cat. <laughs> eh, Kirby doesn't like me. What we're gonna need to do is... Go straight forward. Go up here. Hello there, here to pay another visit to me, Shaku. Maybe. I'm assuming that means yes. Yeah, me showing you my butt means yes. Re he's regained his eyesight, it seems. Okay, fine, whatever. Well, anyway, as you can see, we have over 400 praise at this point. What we want to do is upgrade our purse for the last time, and as you can see, we have additional praise that we cannot use. Can't use it anything. That praise, every time you get a unit of praise, it turns into a thousand yen now. So, yep, now it's really, really easy to get money if you just keep getting praise. Regardless, let's talk to Ishaku. We can feel the day of darkness is almost here. I know. Don't look at me like that, Ami. Yes, you're right. I do have a grandson. His name is Isun. Even when he was small, he had the potential to surpass me. I expected a lot of him, so I trained him really hard. But it backfired, and he ended up hating painting. I doubt he'd even pick up a brush nowadays. Well, technically he did pick up a brush to do rejuvenation in the beginning of the game, plus he picked up a brush to paint the masks for us, so... If you ever bump into him on his travels, please tell him that I'm praying for his happiness. And give him this. There we go. Stray bead number 99. All I can do for him now. I love my grandson more than anyone could ever know. Aww. So difficult for me ever since Eason ran away. I tried to pretend I never had a grandson. But who could ever forget the joy of an adorable grandson? Eason, he may not be perfect, but he's a good boy. He's stubborn like me, though. That's why he won't come home. I have no idea where he is now or what he's doing. I just hope he still has a love of painting deep down inside. Alright. Now that we have 99 stray beads, quote unquote, up there is the Ark of Yamato. See the insignias of the Spider Queen, Crimson Helm, Orochi, Blight, and Ninetales on it. This is where the demons, this is what the demons use to come to this world of Nippon. And Kamui for that matter. But, next episode, we board the Ark of Yamato. Hopes of fighting the Demon King himself. So, next time on Okami, we're going to be doing just that. See you guys then.